as far as uh this situation, I, I don't I don't believe in family getting involved in my marriage at all. Now I, I'm sure I'm probably the only one to feel like it, but I'm not. Ain't none of you motherfuckers getting involved. Your mammy, your daddy, your pappy, nobody. Nope. You have no business in my marriage. Now, what should have happened? All of this should have happened before I got married. Now, you can give me all the cancel. You can say whatever your opinions is, whatever your thoughts is, before we say I do. Anything after what I do, I'm not trying to hurt you. This is between me and Mrs. Hink. Has nothing to do with everybody else. We are a circle of two. Nobody's cracking that circle. If we have issues and we can't resolve it between us two, then we will go and seek marriage counseling. And we're going to resolve with the Before we get married, we're going to go through premarital counseling. And I'm going to remind her, and I hope she reminds me of the tools that we got before cancel, before we got married. But if for some reason, we, it, we're still not getting it. Then, like I said, we will go to a counselor. Now, again, I'm going to go to a man. A male counselor, not a female counselor. We're not playing off emotions and feelings. We're not doing that. I know y'all may say, oh, you said sounds sexist. Y'all kiss my ass. Y'all not married to me. Only person has to worry about that is me and Mrs. Inc. But we're going to be good because we're going to do what we need to do in order to make this successful. And as far as that that uh, situation on that, on that now, she's selfish. Like you said, because she relied on friends. That was the first problem. But I don't even blame it all on her. Tyrese, I blame it on you. Because why does she have those type of friends in her circle? You should have went through her friends list, invited everybody over for dinner, and listened to their conversation. And if his heifer talk crazy or ratchet or anything like that, you need to cut her. She needs to be off. She needs to be no longer invited or around you. Because she doesn't mean, she doesn't mean you no good. She's a leech. And she's going to cause you pain and mishap. And what she's going to do, any crack she can find in the armor, she's going to sneak in her and she's going to infest it with like a disease. We're not having these type of relationships in our marriage. This is not going to be beneficial to us. Cut cut Stacy off. And Stacy got to go. Hopefully she respects me as a husband or as a man that she's willing to do that. Or to have a conversation with Stacey. Stacey, I appreciate you. It ain't going to work with us. Cut her like a relationship and let her be gone. Now, she feels some type of way, then let her know why you, you had to cut off. Baby girl, you too sloppy. You, you, you're not about what I'm trying to do. And hopefully, if she's willing to change, then maybe you give her some grace. But if she continue to be ratchet and she shows that, then you be done with her. I agree with you, Hank. Uh, but, you know, I find it I find it rather I find it difficult that certain people, particularly women, to cut off certain friends that they've known since maybe college, right? Or like late high school. And although they have, you know, graduated, evolved into their job and they're this new they're this amazing woman, et cetera, you have to understand when there's an amazing woman that has all these characters, please understand that there is a woman who is drag who is uh, dragging behind somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Who presents herself as a friend, but really in reality, she's a leech or she's a rock that's holding her down or an anchor for that matter. You know what I'm saying? And they have some sort of like bond over something and they don't want to let that person go. But that that person has to be kind of like vetted out, like you said. Um, it's, it's kind of tough because you know, I, I understand certain girlfriends are, or sister groups that have been there like, oh, when she lost her job or when she went through that heartbreak or that car accident, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? They had somebody that was there. And sort of, do you give up your support group, although your support group doesn't really support your marriage or your future marriage or thereof, right? Like you got, like a lot of people have to make you know, like almost like a chart to see, like, you know, does this person, you know, benefit me in where I'm heading in the right direction, right? I always said, you know, I, I've always believed that in the idea that married people recruit married people or married people stay within group. Because, like, if you're married 
I have I have certain individuals who I'm, I'm I have a close relationship that are married, and we talk on a business level. We'll go to a cook. We'll I'll go to their cookouts and stuff like that. But they don't come out on a Friday night with the rest of the fellas and stuff like that because he's married. You know what I'm saying? He moves in a in a different type of manner. He moves in a different type of light. You know, so he's not gonna really be out there in that sort of space or capacity. And I respect that. You know what I'm saying? That's something to be uphold, right? He knows how to draw boundaries. And I think whoever you're with, you have to also draw those same type of boundaries in your relationship to ensure its security and its fruitfulness heading forward. I have a, I have, I have a life question. Is, life is full of tough decisions. We all have to make tough decisions. And that's just another thing in life you have to do. It was it may have been a tough decision for a man to, to be monogamous, but he's willing to make that decision for the right woman. That's a decision I had to make, and that's a decision I'm willing to stand by because that's not only is required for my, my wife, but myself and the good Lord. So now I know it's gonna be a tough decision. And if you need me, I will you could put blame it on me. It's Hink's fault. Hink I don't care. Give That's it a back. whole song, too. I will take that L. At the end of the day, if, if it's going to help me and my, my wife be successful, it's well worth it. It is well worth it. Go ahead, Cookie. So my question is, are you talking, are we talking about friends that have an, a, an ability to a bit, a, the ability to modify or coerce your partner into doing things that you would like, or are you just talking about a ratchet friend that she had that she, she we know she ratchet. Don't even, I don't even pay attention to her, but you know that's my dog. I've known her since second grade, type stuff. Like, because I mean, you, you say you're gonna want want this your your woman to cut her off, right? But do you trust the judgment? of your wife and taking advice from a ratchet female or do you no. automatically say now nah, she got to go you I know what i mean I, like yeah, I, I don't trust her advice because she she's as her friend now it's obvious you made a bad decision by friending her if she's a ratchet like we, you just the, the words you just use that already tells me you got bad decision making because she's your friend, and you know she's ratchet, and you know she's sloppy, and you've seen her sleep with your best friend's boyfriend. Yeah, no. We don't need that in our lives. She, that's a questionable decision right there. So I'm going to help you make this decision by making it for you. Let this woman go. She's not So are you willing to let your man whore friends go? Man. Yeah, I, I've let a, a couple of male friends go okay. because of this. So yeah, why why not? I digress. It, it, it's not going to be one way. If 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 my buddies are are not for relationship and not with relationship, I don't need to have to even mention the conversation because it's obvious it's not what you're about. You don't I digress. About I was just making sure. I got I was you. Making sure. I think it, I think it, I think it also um as a woman, you have to be able to see certain spirits in other women. Like you have to be able to acknowledge it. And honestly, men see it before women see it. Like th that's why you'll have, you know, your guy be like, that one right there, I don't know. I know that's your friend and all, but she she conniving, she's sneaky. She, you know, she don't mean you no good. She might laugh in your face and smile in your face, but she, men recognize it before women do. And women have to get to a point where they recognize it sooner. So when you when you get into a relationship, it's not hard to let this girl go. <laughs> You're not right. like, no, no, that's my friend. And we've been friends since fourth grade. And yeah, absolutely. You have, to, you have to recognize these things. And you can't be afraid to break away from that crowd. Like you can't, you, women have a fear of the unknown. They have a fear of the unknown because it makes them anxious. It makes them uneasy. Who is going, who is going to rock with me? Who's going to, you have to be okay with traveling alone sometimes as a woman. You can't oh, always have this assimilation attitude and think you're going to get where you want to get in life because a lot of times women don't mean other women well. And it's sad to say, but it's the truth. It is the truth. They have this, yeah. women have this, you know, let's cluster together. And when one is doing great, we're all doing great, but you don't know how to really speak life into your friend when they're not doing good. 
Mm -hmm. And you know where to be found. You had a friend's like, well, when I was going through so-and-so, you ain't even call me. That's because that's not your friend. <laughs> they just with mm -hmm. you when times are good. 